Hi everyone, I'm Cass Fetter and it's my absolute pleasure to host these outstanding leaders from three standout brands for this session focused on the incredible impact Monday.com has had on their everyday work. I'm joined here by Jennifer from Lincoln Savings Bank, Breezy from Mars Ringley, and Brad from Lightspeed. Welcome to you all and thanks for joining. So today we're gonna to find out what I'm sure you're all wondering, how these brands are using Monday.com and the impact they've witnessed that's made them love using the platform. So let's get started. We have Jennifer Heller here. Jennifer is a corporate development officer and since working on her dad's business since the age of 12, she's been interested in fixing and improving common workflow and operational challenges. Recently, the bank adopted EOS, or Entrepreneurial Operating System, which offers a cutting edge approach to running your business. And as its name suggests, is most commonly used by entrepreneurs running small, fast paced businesses. So Jennifer, tell us what it's all about and why a bank that's been around for over a hundred years is using EOS and why you chose money.com to support it. So the reason the bank adopted uh, EOS even though it tends to be more for small or medium sized ish businesses is because of the simple structure. But the other side of that too is, is that we're a very entrepreneurial business. Each of our departments operates on their own in the company. The, the head of those, those departments can make decisions. Um, they have budgets, et cetera. So they operate kind of on their own and in their own structure. So even though we're one big happy family and we have to manage everything from the corporate level, we do empower our people to manage their departments so that we have a better outcome because they own the outcome. And EOS, does it come with a platform already or what made you decide to look outside for a specific platform to manage all of this? Um, they have a platform that they recommend. It's, it's very basic and they, they want you to keep things simple. Okay. And if you're a small business to small to medium ish size business, you can keep it simple. If you're our size business, you have to try really hard to keep things simple. <laughs> and so the best way to keep it simple was to use a platform that's a little more complex. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, but it's actually how I apply this is it would be a mess if I was using Excel spreadsheets, which is also what a lot of companies on EOS are using. They're not getting, in my opinion, they're not even getting 70% of the benefit of EOS if they're not utilizing monday.com with it because of the dashboards, because of the intuitive predictive measures. If you're on Excel, you're, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't even recognize your business if you put it on Monday.com. Amazing. So you mentioned a few times that EOS is all about keeping things simple. Can you, uh, for those who don't know uh, EOS, can you explain what the six components are? It's really a set of simple concepts and practical tools. And they have a lot of tools, but the basic tools are your people, you have to have your vision and everybody on board with it 100%, right? Um, you have to manage your data and you have to track your data so you can see those trends. So you're not just looking backward on accounting reports, but you're looking forward and using some predictive measures. Um, you have your issues that you get out of the way so you can reach your rocks, um, which are your goals. And then you have your traction, which are your rocks and your meetings that are every single week. You have a 90 minute meeting every single week. And then you have your process that's documented with monday.com and then it's followed by all because of monday.com. So when we put all of this together, when COVID hit, okay, we had already been in for a quarter. Now, if we wouldn't have had this in place, I, I would say, yeah, we, we would have been fine. I mean, we've been in business 110 years, so I'm pretty sure we're okay. Um, but we were more than fine. We also tracked our rocks, we tracked our issues, we tracked everything, and we still finished at 80% on the mark for the quarter, even with COVID. Um, we were just able to see, again, those trends and be able to prevent the negative outcome by the end of the month, by the end of the quarter, um, by pivoting and doing some things differently that we wouldn't have been able to have a purview on if it wasn't for Monday.com or EOS. Wow. So. Why did you choose monday.com for EOS and what does this all look like in the platform? So the reason we chose monday.com to support EOS was because we are not a small business. We are not 
uh, a small business with two different departments um, or three different departments. Usually they have three different departments like a marketing and finance and um, it, it kind of a business operations group. Um, we have 12 different departments with different leadership teams and we are doing everything from insurance and investments to uh, fintech business, uh, which is global. Uh, for being a small town business in Iowa, community banking is important to us and having relationships is important to us. So in order to keep that human touch with our bank, we really needed to get our teams in touch with our core values and support those and continue that structure throughout the business. And the only way to do that is to take whatever the operating system is that you agree on, like EOS, and put it in a platform that's manageable and can, it, the continuity of messaging is there. So that's one of the areas that Monday.com is extraordinary in. We don't have a thousand emails anymore. When we manage EOS, each team has um, a set of boards and it goes through the agenda and they have measurables for their scorecard and the scorecards kept in Monday.com with formulas that do all the math for them. They just enter their numbers each week and we know exactly where we are and where we're going. Um, and if there's a trend to um, fail by the end of the month, we can pivot and change something so that by the end of the month, we, when we see the accounting, we don't look back and say, oh, well, we missed the mark. So Monday.com helps us track everything so that we can see trends uh, and identify them and then pivot to prevent failure by the end of the month. So that is a huge, huge part of monday.com for us is the trending patterns and the dashboards pulling all of the information up from all of their boards so we have 12 teams so can you imagine trying to sort through all of those boards all of their to-do lists all of their issues lists issues are what prevent you from reaching your goals and if i'm the ceo i can't sort through all that information so what i have to do is i have to have a view which is the dashboard view so I can get that 50,000 foot view, the health of actual departments, take a look at the issues that they're having. Are they staffing issues? Are they supply issues? Um, are they vendor issues? And how do I get involved? What can I pro provide to them to prevent the stop that they're, they're hitting for the issue and get that goal um, reached for them by the end of the quarter? Because when you're living in EOS, you're living a 90 day life. So every quarter it changes over. So our rocks, which are our 90 day goals, are kept in there. Uh, and we can monitor whether they're on track or off track. And with the dashboards, we can pull it up and see what percentage of the entire company is on track or off track. And we can drill down from those dashboards in to see what, what's off track. And is it gonna prevent the business from getting where we wanna go by the end of the year? Um, we have executive meetings every week. Uh, and those committee meetings, we pull this information up and we, we take a look at it and we try and figure out what level of concern belongs where and where our time belongs to address those things. And Monday.com helps us sort through all of that, report on all of that and dive deeper when we need to, um, but just see the summary view like we need to on a daily basis. So that's kind of how we're utilizing uh, Monday.com to support EOS in our business and how we're keeping 12 teams, which executive management just got onto EOS, so that's 13, and then our sales leadership team is getting on, so that is 14. So I'll have 14 teams on EOS by the end of this year. So hey, Jennifer, I have a question uh, about your project that um, I'm hoping, I wanna ask for selfish reasons, because I think that I could uh, bring it back towards uh, to light speed. But, and it sounds like you've, you've touched on it in what you've discussed previously. I just kind of want a bit more detail, or maybe it doesn't have to be granular or anything, just about um, what you're thinking. Uh, one of the things that I've been looking at is um, trying to report historically what's happened inside of Monday. So what was, what was happening on all of my different boards or on my dashboard in March or February in comparison to June, July? I'm wondering mm -hmm. if you've found some shortcuts or some, uh, some ways in which to uh, report historically rather than just looking forward. You're kind of playing with that discussion about, you know, having the accountant's reports for the, for the past, but then using Monday for the future. Have you found ways in which Monday can be used for the past? Um, actually, 
we live, like I said, in a 90 day life. So we keep boards from a quarterly basis. We set up boards quarterly. And oh, what's great about these boards is you can duplicate. And when you duplicate the boards, all the automations and integrations duplicate too. Mm. So I would say if you want a month to month, then create month to month boards. You're going to be pulling that data up through those dashboards anyway, and you get to select yeah. which boards you're pulling from. So I've done it that way. Um, I've also called down, um, I don't know if any of you guys have created Llama Farm reports yet. Uh, yes. Okay, good. <laughs> if you're on Monday.com, you understand what the Llama Farm <laughs> is. Yes. Um, <laughs> and uh, I call that by group um, in the boards by quarter. So I have one llama board, uh, dashboard, that pulls from the issues board, which is a one year board, but each one year board is called by a group that is called Q1, Q2, et cetera. Because the llama board takes a lot of data to report, and there's a lot of llamas on there when you have 12 teams. Uh, a lot of hula hoops, um, there's just a lot going on. So uh, if you want a llama farm, you gotta call it by quarter so that when you report it doesn't, you know, stall out your computer. <laughs> but I would say historically, if you wanna keep those things, then you just create the board or you create the widget that is reporting that historic information and then just keep that um, it, it, oh, once, yeah. you, once you get past it. Yeah, that's a really good idea. I hadn't thought about it in that way. So thanks for kind of putting me in that direction. That's really good. You're welcome. Next up is Breezy, who works in global insights on the confectionery side of Mars with Twix, Snickers, Skittles, Starbursts, and other treats you know and love. Global Insights right now is going through a massive transformation, trailblazing a new path for both insights and global marketing in the business. But there's another total different transformation and change going on right now, and that's the way teams engage, sustain, and deepen interracial dialogue at Mars. Now, this is an incredible initiative you started, Bruzy. Tell us about these courageous conversations and how you're using Monday.com to support, sustain, and grow them. To speak a little bit about how Monday.com fits into our Courageous Conversations program, I'm going to take us back to the very beginning. For most of us in the world back in March, we all fell asleep in one world and woke in a completely new world. And then following the COVID pandemic, which is still going on here in the U.S., around July, we here in the U.S. fell asleep in a COVID world and then woke up in a racially charged world. COVID changed not only how we interact with our associates, but also how we engage as a team. We are seeing protests happen across the U.S. We're seeing conversations happen that have been needing to happen for a long time and a bit of a revolution and an uproar. So the way this started to affect our associates is it's really hard to work, have a meeting, to stay engaged in your work. So I have been getting lots of emails, lots of concerns from people who are having the same kind of protests happening outside, safety issues, and overall, really struggling to stay engaged with work. And I thought to myself, with all of this going on, it would be really helpful for the team if we started to connect provide resources, and be able to share the experiences. We can learn from each other, we can connect on a deeper level as a team, and hopefully bring Mars Wrigley back to the glory of business. As many of you know, treats and snacking is something that we do impulsively when we're on the go. And wearing masks has been a real barrier to people chewing gum, to people consuming mints, so this has been an opportunity for us to really develop and grow the business. Wow, it's incredibly powerful. Now, you, you're in a global team. So how many, how many people are in your team? Where are you spread around? Like why, why choose Monday.com for something like this? What was the initial sort of driver for thinking Monday.com, you know, which is typically managed you know, for work, um, to lead and sort of 
be a resource for, for these courageous conversations. So maybe tell us a little bit about that. Great, thanks for that, Cass. Mars Wrigley is a $3 billion business. You've named some of our great brands like Twix and Skittles and Snickers. And what that means is that we operate in 180 different countries. So every day our global team is meeting with at least four or five of these countries. And with that happening, it's really hard to bring together this organization that's spread across the globe. There are people in Germany, there are people in Uzbekistan who have no idea what the protests that are happening in the US mean, how they impact us. It's hard for people in the US to understand the protests happening in Hong Kong and all of the issues that are happening in Latin America with women fearing for their lives. So given how disconnected the business can be when it starts to grow as large as Mars is, Monday.com has really helped us, not only from a collaboration aspect, but also from a governance aspect, where we have one board that the team can come and manage their projects, and then spaces for the smaller teams to break out and manage more brand related and innovation projects. So this is a tool that the business has already been using to connect a previously disconnected business. Given that we've already had those behaviors at Mars um, of using Monday.com to really connect, we thought it was the perfect opportunity to use it for Courageous Conversations. Amazing, and can you tell us a little bit about what that looks like on the platform? How do you operate as a team coming together and having these conversations, scheduling speakers, getting input from the different teams? How have you created Monday.com as an open space? Mm, such a good question. So as you know, it takes a lot of moving parts to put together a program. I'm sure everyone listening right now has either been a part of an event or been part of a project and you know there's a lot of moving pieces. So from a very basic aspect, I used Monday.com to organize all of the details that needed to happen for our program. As Cass said, you know, organizing external speakers, sharing our stories, putting together the schedule, the calendar, and also follow-ups with everybody so that we all have homework and are held accountable to our homework. It's one thing to have a conversation, it's a whole other thing to put it into action. And here's what we started to see is in the conversations, we would ask people to share their stories, which to be honest was very impactful for the way that we now work together. But for example, where were you born? And what was the community like that you grew up in? What were some of the values that your parents and your family instilled in you? And what we learned is that hearing these stories actually uncover some of the biases that we as adults are still seeing the world through. And understanding these biases are a critical step to unlocking racism, to growing together as a team, understanding how we work now in a COVID world and in a pandemic world. So as we have these conversations, not everyone is comfortable using their voice to share that story. And not everyone is comfortable asking questions. Um, it can be really daunting and intimidating to ask questions in a large group, particularly when there's senior leaders there. So the technology is monday.com served as, as a safe space for people to ask their really important questions. You know, like what kind of language do I use? And I don't understand um, the looting that's happening in the protests in the US. And that safe space has really facilitated the people who aren't that comfortable speaking, which is such an important aspect to make sure that everyone feels comfortable, that everyone feels safe, that everyone has a space to ask their questions and to find their resources. And in Courageous Conversations, Cass, we share a lot of resources. You know, check out this article, check out this website, check out this cool blogger. Um, there's awesome TikTok challenges happening right now that really relate to these conversations. And I found that everybody kept emailing me saying, where was this article? Where was this thing you were talking about? Now we have everything organized in a really easy way on monday.com. Everybody's already going there. Now they're going there to use resources, to share their stories, and to help develop Mars Wrigley into the business that we hope for tomorrow. So beautiful. And how many people are actually engaging in these conversations now? Oh, it's growing every day. It makes me so happy to see it growing every day. We started with a team of 88, 
which is the entire Global Insights business at Mars Wrigley. And what we found is because Insights tends to work with so many marketing teams, brand teams, sales teams, that it just started spreading. Um, People post about it on LinkedIn. You can see the hashtag Courageous Conversations on LinkedIn to see how people are feeling like being able to share their stories and hear stories from others actually changes the way that we do marketing at Mars because now we understand the biases that go into picking characters in our advertising casting for our commercials um, that are, are played out in some of the language that we use when we ask questions to people. So there's a lot of ways that this has started to grow and now impact. I have a huge question for Breezy. So I've been sitting here thinking to myself, as you were talking, you know, it's that safe space for everyone to come to and, um, you know, post their questions and have those courageous conversations. And I take it that it's not, is it's not an anonymous scenario, right? Right. Or is it? So there's two things. There is an, an anonymous Q&A, so you have the option to do that. You also have the option to ask with your profile, with your name, you can ask questions so that we can get back to you directly. What we found is likely what you assume most people were asking anonymously in the beginning. And as we worked out a lot of the big questions like, um, what's a Karen mean? What's a microaggression? You know, we, uh, can we talk about white fragility? After a lot of these big ones kind of got out of the way, people feel way more comfortable now using their profile and their name and identifying themselves to ask questions. I think there's a lot less pressure once, once you get the big barriers, those issues um, kind of block you from opening up and getting to the real goal of a truly diverse workforce. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I may even ask everyone on this panel, what does diversity mean to you? Because this is a really basic question that through the Courageous Conversations program, at the end of it, I'd have a much different definition than I started. So maybe to everyone on the panel, what is your idea or definition of diversity? Diversity is one of the kind of core principles of Lightspeed. We really pride ourselves on diversity being one of the tenets of how we operate. To me, and based on the, my relationship with working as an employee at Lightspeed, diversity means committing to always making changes. It means committing to listening to different perspectives and reflecting on that, and then trying to figure out the ways in which that could be incorporated in how you do business, how you organize your meetings, how you prioritize decisions. Diversity means a commitment to not being set in your ways, to being open to new perspectives and actioning them. Yeah, I would, I would definitely agree with that. I would say it's being open to every, every option. You know, it's everyone in a room, right? And having a conversation, not just um, people who look like you, act like you, um, came from where you came from, uh, are the same gender as you. And, you know, you can't get diverse thought and you can't get to the best solution without having a variation and the widest variation a frame of reference in the room that you can get and so coming from a communications background that's the the a number one focus that that I've always had is what's a person's frame of reference and how do they bring it to the table and and usually you get a pretty diverse group of people in a room you get the best solution and the best ideas and people need to start opening their eyes to that yeah one of the blockers we uncovered through this was that people had a hard time being in the same room, that the door wasn't always open, you know, the same kind of access into the room wasn't there for everyone. So one of my big lessons was, if you first be sure to create inclusion, diversity naturally happens. Mm -hmm. So having an inclusive team, um, making sure the door is always open, that everyone has the same access to the door and the same resources to get into the door and then sit at the same table and all the chairs are lined up the same way, to use a metaphor, right? Then we have diversity. And we also found at Mars that most people thought of diversity first with ethnicity. And I was really pleased at the end of it to come to find that you can have a room full of white people and there's still a lot of diversity. 
because as both of you touched on, it's really about diversity of thought and different thoughts. Mm -hmm. Breezy, for the questions that people had, you said that people could ask anonymously, were you using um, monday.com forms? For yes. <laughs> yeah. Last but not least, we have Brad here with us. Brad works at Lightspeed, which is an all-in-one cloud-based point of sale system. Right now, the company is all about future-proofing your business. And so as part of this, Brad is working on a very, very meaningful project, which is helping small mom and pop retailers bring their business online to start an e-commerce platform. As you can imagine, this is an incredibly important move with so many businesses closing due to the pandemic. Brad, tell us about how you and the team at Lightspeed are ensuring these locally owned businesses don't get left behind and how Monday.com has supported this mission. Gladly. Uh, really happy for this opportunity to discuss uh, how Monday has really helped us out with this project. So to give some context, the project actually started about a year ago. So we've been doing this before the pandemic. We'd identified a group of customers that we thought would really benefit from bringing their business to an omni-channel environment. Omni-channel meaning that they can sell both in their brick and mortar location, but also that they could have an e-commerce uh, location so that they can be selling online. So we used monday.com to identify these customers, to start reaching out to these customers, but also to design a workflow or design a process that would enable them or uh, empower them to start using these new tools. So when we're talking about mom and pop businesses, you can think of, you know, like the, the neighborhood sporting goods store that you're going to buy a baseball glove at or, you know, the yarn store or where you're going to buy a bicycle, maybe just even a clothing store where you're going to go buy, uh, you know, some new summer clothes. So those businesses, you can imagine that uh, if they've been running for 10, 15, 20, maybe 30 years, they have a really uh, a very set way of operating and they know how to do that and they're really good at it. But then the question becomes, how do you set up a website? What's a de what are the design choices that you're gonna make? For example, what does domain mean? How do you get a domain? How do you enable your domain? How does that relate to your e-commerce? How do you set up payments, that kind of stuff? So what Monday has allowed us to do is create a step-by-step -step logical sequence of training events for these customers to take their time, to learn what they need to do, and to have us here at Lightspeed support them throughout that process so that they can come to us and say, well, you know, I'm really struggling with this step. And in that way we can identify what is going on with them and we can redirect them towards what the resources that they need. Maybe that's another webinar. Maybe that's some of the help center articles that we've prepared. And then using monday.com, this has really allowed us to collaborate across different departments. Because like I'm saying, there's the brick and mortar side of things, but then there's also the e-commerce side of things. So here at Lightspeed, those are two different uh, teams. So how do we make sure that the, the customer is having a smooth transition from one team to another and not feeling like we're just kind of punting them around with no, uh, with no kind of direction? So Monday gives us that really great opportunity to uh, bring a whole bunch of, you know, dozens of different employees together to work on a big project for individual customers from, you know, get them to point A to point B and make sure that at point B they are quite happy. You know, we have those checks and we have the ability to, uh, like um, what Jennifer was saying, to use reporting and to use the data to really make sure and vet all of the information that the customer is having a good experience, that it's not taking them too long and that they do feel supported. So this project's been around for about a year. How, are, how have things changed since the pandemic started? Um, yeah, so, yeah, really good question. Yeah, so like I said, yeah, the project has been around for about a year. And so that meant that, as um, Breezy was saying, in March, when you know, we went to sleep, it was one world, and when we woke up, it was another world. That meant, and I guess similar to Jennifer as well, is that we had something in place before all of this happened. So what it meant for us is that we were able to scale and start reaching out to customers that we hadn't anticipated would need this as an opportunity. So those who previously a year ago said that they weren't interested in having an e-commerce or that they weren't interested in taking part in this project because it, it didn't suit their needs now realize that if they weren't able to open their doors for one week, two weeks, or who knows what uh, they were feeling in March, that this was a really great opportunity for them to, to jump on and to start uh, looking at their opportunities. I think one of the other really great things that Monday offered is that because we're able to track all of that data, let's say, for example, if I'm going back to that idea of like the domain setup, how do you set up your domain? 
we're able to track how long it takes for one person for this type of business to get from point A to point B. And so with that data, we're then able to identify what are the gaps, where can we invest our resources so that that customer, uh, that type of customer doesn't have to spend six days trying to set up their domain. We can then instead do it in one day. So with uh, COVID happening, we had a big influx of customers, but because we already had a lot of this data, we were then able to make the use case or make the argument that we could invest in X, Y, and Z to, uh, to smooth out the process. So what we've been finding is that since March, our processes have really improved. Our customers are incredibly happy with everything that's been going on, but also our employees. Our employees are finding that they're able to uh, work directly with these customers to support these customers and to make them feel that their, uh, their time is well spent and that everything is going well for them. So yeah, that, that ability kind of to have, as Jennifer was saying as well, to have that kind of 50,000 foot view of the whole thing, but then to hone in specifically on customers is really what uh, this project has really benefited from by using Monday. Wow, beautiful. I just think it's so nice. And, you know, just to think of like, you know, a local business kind of, you know, going online is, is really incredible. And, you know, I'm yeah. sure it makes a huge difference for so many businesses. Amazing. Absolutely. And yeah, not just that, but also just having that one less fear, one less thing that's worrying them at the end of the day, that they know that they can collect their orders. You know, maybe they've had to lay off some staff, but this way they can bring the staff back in in a different capacity instead of working a till. Now they're putting things in boxes and printing shipping labels. So this has allowed these businesses to really transform under what are unpre uh, unprecedented times and to have uh, a service that they were paying for before the pandemic step up to the plate and say, you know, we're here for you. We're going to help you through this. We're definitely going to make sure that your business can continue to thrive despite what's happening in the world. I was really curious, Bradley, if you could speak to any of the e-com trends that you're seeing, given now you're bringing all of these, you know, brick and mortar businesses online, are you seeing that they're setting up with Shopify, with Amazon? Are they D2C? What kind of templates are they using? Are they using WordPress? Sure, yes. Yeah. So the really, the easy answer for that is that we do all of the above. Wow. So yeah, so our customers are able to use an e-commerce platform that we host. We have themes that are available to them. We take care of all of the payment processing. We have integrations with, um, with shipping. So the customer, it's really just a one-stop shop. The, the issue that I kind of was touching on is that because we do everything, there's a lot for them to learn. So, you know, they have to learn what, what does shipping mean? That's kind of one of the big questions. Like, how do you, um, you know, we, I, uh, I grew up, I'm, I'm 31. And so online shopping wasn't a thing for me, but nowadays I, I fall into that kind of like trap where, I won't buy from a shop unless they offer free shipping, mm -hmm. but even the prices might be higher. Like I, there's that like that cognitive thing that's going on there. So it's kind of like, we have to explain a lot of that to the customers. Like you, you can find a shipper who has really great flat rates, but then, you know, you can't put that back onto your customer. Or if you do, you have to set it with certain weight limits, that kind of thing. So yeah, so the trends are, are really unique based on the, the type of business, you know, uh, bikes are going to ship a lot differently than yarn is going to ship. Does that uh, answer your question? Yeah, as you said, there's a whole lot of things to manage. Yeah, exactly. It's not an easy task. I, I really commend every time that I connect with a, a customer and I speak with them, I, I commend them for all of the work that they're doing. If it's new to them, it's a whole new way of thinking about their business. Mm -hmm. And uh, for, you know, if the, the generational gap is there. If this is something that they, they've never even thought about before, they don't do it on their own. I'm really glad that we have those resources that are available for them to really explain like what are the benefits for you uh, and what does this mean and how can you set it up. And then on the other side of it is that we have really, really great well trained or well, um, well resourced teams who are so happy to connect with these customers. You know, we're all uh, really dedicated to making sure that their businesses thrive. If their businesses thrive, then our company thrives. And so that's really what uh, our, our teams are motivated by. So we go the extra mile to make sure that Facebook is set up and Instagram is set up and that kind of thing. I like how when you're talking about businesses, see, I've sat in a number of seats and one of them is business owner. And um, a lot of times we get stuck in our, I'm an employee, right, world. 
and we see our department or we see our job description and you know we're getting some emails at night or you know on the weekends and things like that and we work a little bit of overtime but i love how you're describing the scenario with these businesses is it doesn't stop you know they're, they're constant yeah. worries right yeah. their phone is always on they're always checking their online orders they're always checking their emails that it isn't a punch in punch out type of thing and i really like how you're you know putting that together and i i'd be interested in um you know seeing a video blog or anything that you guys would put together that kind of put pieces this together for people because i think there's a, a larger understanding here of why you should be doing business locally why you should be patronizing these um mom and pop shops um how it ties into the community and how hard these people really work and how few people they have on hand um to help them uh, which is why you struggle right so monday.com mm -hmm. obviously is probably a help how how does monday.com fill in the gaps um in some cases for these groups that that don't have a lot of staffing these these companies yeah, I think a really good example that happened last week was um, one team member had been in touch with a customer and was helping them set up their website. And then we received an email from her saying, uh, just to let you know, I'm in labor, I'm on my way to the hospital. And so if you could please yeah. contact me in two weeks. And so we were able to set a deadline on that monday.com line item to you know, hold off the communications for two weeks and then send in another communication in two weeks to say, congratulations, I hope everything has gone well, but if you're you know, available, if you have the time, we're ready to restart the, the workflow with you. Please just let us know when you're available. So yeah, that's just one example where Monday has those types of like, you know, the widgets or the, the formulas or whatever uh, functionality is there to just keep us on track of all of the individual uh, situations for these customers. Mm -hmm. And I should say, she's, she, uh, she got back to us right away and she said that the delivery went well, everyone is happy. She's just gonna take a little bit of time before she gets back to the computer to continue working. Yeah, there's the small business thing again, right? Just had a baby, see you in two weeks. <laughs> if you're an employee, it's like, see you in 10 weeks or you know, six months or whatever. So uh, I definitely, um, I really uh, enjoy hearing what you do and, um, I like that you're helping these small businesses succeed through this um, because Thanks. they, you know, the brick and mortars were struggling before COVID. Um, yeah, and, and sure. you know, your business, as you said, was already in business providing solutions. And it's really important to small business people to have a, a resource that they can trust at that point, right? Something, a pandemic has just hit. I, I need a company who knows how to do this and is gonna manage it properly. And so with Monday.com integrated there, it sounds like you're doing both and have done both really well. Totally. Yeah, we're, we're very hopeful. You know, we've weathered the last, you know, six months of whatever this, we're gonna call this time historically, the pandemic time, but we're ready for whatever comes down the road. I'm just gonna open up this question to everybody. What has been the biggest impact that you've witnessed using Monday.com? The biggest impact for Monday.com within Mars Wrigley has been connecting a previously disconnected business, removing barriers where we previously had lots of time zone barriers and lack of communication. Specifically within Courageous Conversations, if you or anyone in your organization is looking to create a safe space using technology, I highly recommend using Monday and making sure you set up the framework that people can easily find resources that you discuss, ask the questions that they need, and also that you make sure the board is inclusive and open to everyone. When you have inclusion, diversity naturally follows. Uh, the greatest impact that Monday.com has had um, on our company is the fact that it is trickling down from the implementation of EOS to um, a number of departments where we had uh, a diversity of systems that actually we didn't want. I mean, it's creating this huge inefficiency because this department has a different um, application that we have to use in order to get this and et cetera. So when you have 12 different departments and you're using all these different platforms, everybody becomes a jack of all trades on them, but a master of none. Um, 
So the great thing about Monday.com is it's user friendly and it's so user friendly that people are getting involved with it on the, the EOS level, which is very, you know, pretty basic data entry. Um, but as they are learning more about the automations and the opportunity to integrate, et cetera, um, they are working with Monday.com customer service and they are pulling out Excel spreadsheets that should have been killed long ago and putting them into monday.com so they have efficiency um, and so the the company overall um, as this migrates through departments is going to experience both um, efficiency and cost savings um, both in you know hard costs and soft costs so that's a, that's the big impact i think that's 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 coming yet we haven't seen yet and also, what would you recommend for people trying to do EOS in Monday in Monday.com? What would you tell them? Oh, if they're trying to do EOS in Monday.com, um, I would just say separate your your boards on your agenda. Um, you know, do your scorecard separately with the formulas, and then put a scorecard in your actual L10 meeting. And if you know EOS, you know what I'm saying. Um, so that when you're in your meeting, you go through and you just say you're on track or off track with your scorecard, and then you go straight into your rock reporting. Um, sometimes they will and sometimes they won't match. If your numbers are off and they're off track in your scorecard, it may not mean that they're really off track. Um, for example, we have some lines of business that are seasonal that are actually on track and their numbers are reporting them off track. Um, but we do know by the end of the quarter based on the season that we're in that their numbers will come back and they're trending higher than they were last year. So in their L10 meeting, it says they're on track, even though on their scorecard, it says off track. And we can pull those up together into the dashboard to actually compare side by side in widgets. So we know what's really going on there. And in the conversation bubbles, we can read why this says off track and why this says it's on track. So you can cross reference. Um, so that's a, that's a huge key component, I guess, for us. Amazing. Cool. And uh, Brad? So I think that the best way in which Monday has uh, helped out Lightspeed is that it's empowering every different employee to take ownership. Whereas previously, we'd all been really specialized in what we do and what part of the process we're at. With Monday.com, being able to see the entire process from start to finish, and being able to make changes or add comments or update statuses, enables every member of that team to have visibility and to have uh, to be able to contribute and say well when they get to me at this point i think that they should have already have done this so i think that we need to update the process to add one more step so it's allowing for you know the project managers and for the managers and for the leads to trust in their employees to have that ownership and to say you're the experts here you're the ones who are able to uh, to contribute and so because as Jennifer was saying, it's so user friendly, everyone is able to do that. Everyone is able to kind of step up to the plate and, and take ownership if they want to. And what about for the process of the training, all the training that you guys are doing for moving these businesses over to an online e-commerce platform? What's been the impact there? I think that the impact has been being able to uh, schedule in advance and make sure that we can, can control the resources, make sure that we have enough staff dedicated for X, Y, and Z webinar, or that there's uh, people who are available for one-on-one -on -one training if it's necessary. So it's allowed us to see the, the data and then also make the scheduling choices that are necessary to make sure that A, nobody's left behind, nobody slips through the cracks, and then B, we can really put uh, the, the human power where it needs to be. One of the things that he's saying is the windows into silos. That's, if you're, that's the other side of, I guess, why our bank adopted Monday.com instead of the other oppor opportunities that we had was we have all of these different departments and they, even though they're their own departments, they are interconnected and we, had share, we have shared services departments, you know, like marketing and accounting, et cetera. And they can pop in and out of each other's boards because they have a team member from their departments on each of the business unit teams. Um, so with Monday.com, they can comment instead of email, and you're exactly right. They can see what's going on in the comments and the goals, et cetera, for that department. Whereas before, we couldn't see. It was all silos. And so now you have all these windows into silos, and everyone's getting along, communicating more, you know, more smoothly. And so the processes then, therefore, go more smoothly.
So our session is coming to an end, but I wanted to give everyone an opportunity to share any, any last thoughts. Um, so I, I guess EOS and Monday.com, I feel like they're, you know, the, the forest gumps, the peas and carrots, they kind of go together just wonderfully. Um, I, I think that if your company is interested in not just a platform that is going to support something like EOS, um, any other coaching program, it could support as well. Um, so if you're doing something else and you've de decided to run a different operating system, I honestly, based on everything that Monday.com can do, I don't think there's anything you could throw at it that it couldn't handle um, and impress you with really user-friendly functions and um, reporting. You know, if you have a board of directors that is, you know, wanting that 50,000 foot view or a hundred thousand foot view, you can provide that for them without them, you know, getting too far into the weeds um, and, and micromanaging. Uh, or they can give you really good feedback if they if they are allowed to drill down. So I appreciate you guys listening and being interested in how we utilize Monday.com. And feel free to reach out if you have any questions, whether it's with regard to EOS and how to implement or um, how to work Monday.com uh, along with that process. Thanks so much for your time, everyone. I hope you enjoyed our conversation. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thank you. Now, Brad? I'll say thank you so much for giving us the opportunity, Cass, and thanks to Monday.com for organizing this really uh, incredible event. It's been really wonderful hearing from other people how they use Monday.com, getting to have an open dialogue about the different uh, features and functionalities that maybe we don't use here at Lightspeed. So I really appreciate that opportunity to, uh, to connect with other people and to uh, see what possibilities are there and also just to speak about how it's impacted our, our experience here at Lightspeed. So, Thanks so much. Really appreciate the opportunity. And that's a wrap. Thank you all so much for joining. A big shout out to Breezy, Brad, and Jennifer for joining this incredible conversation. It was my pleasure to host and learn. Again, I'm sure everyone feels this way to learn about your businesses and the ways that you are using Monday.com. I am so excited to see what you do in the future with the platform. Again, there are no limits to what you can do. So it'll be incredible, incredible, incredible to see what you come up with. And uh, as they all said, you can reach out to them on LinkedIn. You can find their LinkedIn in the session itself under their profile. Um, and yes, enjoy the rest of the conference, everybody. And thanks again for joining. Bye-bye.